fourth grade ELA text set series, Vanishing Cultures. The next book in Jane Reynolds' Vanishing Culture series is called Himalaya. This girl's name is Yangshi. She lives in the Himalaya, a region where the world's highest mountains are found. Jane Reynolds met Yangshi and her family while climbing and skiing on some of those mountains. How would life in the mountains compare to life in the desert? Places and people can look very different, but sometimes they are alike in surprising ways. Let's see if the Himalaya and the Sahari are as different as they look. <clears throat> All right. So, um, Okay, guys, so this is the map, and I'm going to show you the location of Tibet, which is, where's Tibet? Right here. Okay, and Nepal. Here's Nepal. So they're, uh, they're situated on two opposite sides of the Himalayan mountain. So we're going to learn about how about people who sometimes cross the mountains. Okay. The Sherpies and the Tibetans live in the Himalaya, sometimes called the Himalayas, the highest mountain in the world where peaks are covered with snow and ice all year long. These people build their homes out of rock, wood, and earth. When the air outside is below freezing, they light fires inside to keep themselves warm. They use large, shaggy animals called yaks to carry such good as tea and salt over the mountains to trade with each other. By trading together, both the need to live, both the Sherpas and the Tibetans can have what they need to live comfortably. Even gifts like turquoise and carpets and som are sometimes traded among them. But this ancient way of life is disappearing. New roads and trucks in the lowlands below the high peaks have taken the place of the old trade routes and yaks in the mountains. Although the Sherpas and the Tibetans may appear different from us, we all share the same feelings and basic needs. We really are all alike no matter where we live. We all belong to the same family, the human family, and every time a culture disappears, we lose a part of ourselves. Because of this, perhaps we should take a look at life in the Himalaya before it vanishes forever. As the moon rises over the Himalaya, the highest mountains on earth, a young Sherpa girl named Yangshi begins, begs her father for a story. She sits in the lap, safe and warm by the kitchen fire, and he begins his tale. So far, so far, these pages remind me of the way Sahara started out. What similarities do you notice? Long ago, men like your great-grandfather traveled over the high mountains to our own little village of Nimchi Bazaar here in Nepal. They came from the land of Tibet, bringing things like tea and salt with them. They were called traders because that was how they made their living. Back in Tibet, your great-grandfather filled bags with salt and loaded them onto the backs of the strong yaks. Leading his animals, he crossed the high mountains, and when he came to our village, he traded his salt at the big Saturday market for things he needed just as we will tomorrow. Soon, Yingxi is fast asleep. She dreams of the time when her great-grandfather came from Tibet to Nepal, the home of the Sherpas. For early the, early the next morning... Yang Shi wakes to the smell of rice cooking. Her mother is already up making a rice drink that is popular in the mountains. She will trade what she makes at the market for things the family needs. While Yang Shi's father and brother are still sleeping, her mother gives Yang Shi a cup of warm milky tea or chai to drink. Outside, the thin mountain air is cold, but Yang Shi is snug and warm in her bed, watching her mother. So what descriptive words on this page helps you understand what it's like outside and inside Yingxi's house? How do you think Yingxi feels right now? As the sun climbs the hill, people from all over gather. They will trade the items they've bought, brought with them for the things they need at the Saturday market. The people from the lowlands carry woven bamboo baskets filled with rice and fruit, while the Tibetans come from the highlands with their yaks carrying salt and tea and more.
The market is outdoors where people can open up their baskets of food, clothes, and gifts for everyone to see. The market is also a place where people can talk and with old friends and more make new ones. Yangshi's older sister, Sonam, Sonam, goes to the market with their mother while Yangshi is still in bed. Sometimes their mother uses Nepali dollars called yuppies to buy food and clothing. clothing. Other times, like today, she barters or trades her home made rice drink for things the family needs as well as sweet treats like bananas for Yangshi and Sunu. Some days Yangshi's father walks the narrow streets of their village to a place called a monastery where wise men called monks live. The wisest monk of all is called a lama. Yangshi's father takes along some rice and some of the drink Yangshi's mother makes. These are special gifts he will give the Lama when he asks for a blessing of good fortune and for his family. Yangshi and her fifth sister follow their father so they can spin the prayer they can spin the prayer wheels outside the monastery. They believe each time a wheel spins completely around they will be blessed with good fortune. Yangshi and her sister especially like the large prayer wheel inside the monastery because it is painted with bright pictures telling stories of long ago. So why is the monastery an important place in the village? How do you think people feel when they go there? Can you think of a place in our community that is like the monastery? Outside the monastery are stones with prayers carved on them by the people of the village. While Yangshi and her sister are looking at their at these prayer stones, they see a woman carrying a heavy lid of water buffalo hides. The woman carry the woman carries a load of hides on her back, using a strap that goes over her head. The Sherpas have carried heavy loads this way for a long, very, very long time. The woman is carrying the hides over the mountains all the way to the pit, where they will be used to make boots. Yangshi and her sister watch the woman go, remembering that Tibet is the land their great-grandfather came from. Yangshi and her sister only stay at the monastery for a short time. Their mother needs them to help with the many daily chores. Together they will pick lettuce from the garden and wash it in the village spring. They are also clothes to be washed, even like even little brothers help, although today he makes a mess. The floor of the house must be swept too, and the wool from their sheep must be guarded, carted so it will be ready for their mother to spin until yarn. She will use the yarn to make things like sweaters and mittens for her family. She may barter some of the things she makes at the next Sunday, Saturday market. After they have finished their chores, Yangshi and her sister like to play on the big rock behind their house. Just like the smaller stones of the monastery, these rocks, this rock is carved with the prayers of the village people. Yangshi's sister has to help her climb to the top of this special rock. People from other countries often come to Nepal to climb the high mountains, and they sometimes hire Yangshi's father to help them. His yaks, his yaks carry their food, tents, and supplies. Yangshi's father has even taken his yaks to the highest peak in the world, Mount Everest. Yaks are very important to Yangshi and her family village. They carry heavy loads over rough, rocky ground, and they provide food and milk. Yangshi and her sister like, the, like to help their father keep watch over the yaks when he takes them to graze in the pastures outside, uh, just outside their village. Sometimes their father lets Yangshi and her sister have a short ride on their favorite yak before they herd the animals home. Some villagers use their yaks to carry crops like potatoes from their garden in Nepal all the way to the pet. The yaks can easily walk around boulders and follow the rocky trail that leads from the village up the valley and through the high mountains. Because the journey between Nepal and Tibet is long and slow, many villagers camp among the rocks to rest along the way. The yaks don't seem to mind the trip. They appear content to follow each other, walking the old trade route. So in what ways are the yaks like the camels in Sahari? Like the rest of the village, Yangshi is looking forward to the early, yearly Himalayan festival called Mani Rimdu. People come from far away to be part of this exciting event. The monks gather at the monastery to pre prepare for the fest celebration. 
In the courtyard, two monks drop tiny bits of hand-colored river sand to create beautiful pictures inside a circle. This sand drawing represents the circle of life and is called a mandala. The most beautiful mandala is inside the candlelit monastery at the end of the festival. The sand will be poured back into the river by returning the sand. The monks will show that the flow of life always continues. Mass dancers are a fun part of the festival. In brightly colored costumes, the monks act out stories about how to be good, helpful, and caring. Yang Shi and her sister love their mountains and are proud to be, part of, be from the Himalaya. To everyone they meet, they gave the traditional Sherpa greeting, Namaste. It means I salute the life within you. So what are you thinking about life in the Himalayas? Would you like living in a village like Yangshi's? Why or why not?